the sound of Tuesday night. Yes. Oh yeah. And Kevin Ryan is actually in the great 50 states. I was going to say the great 48, but that's... Uh, uh, I mean, the continental U.S., yes, sir. Yes, you are. Uh, the continental U.S. Welcome back. How was your trip back? Oh, I mean, I, I upgraded, and so I felt all hoity-toity. Oh, look at me. I'm priority with my baggage, and I get champagne, and I get beer, and I get a good meal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll talk about in a moment. I made a brewery stop literally right after I left LAX. Oh wow! Oh yeah, wow. we'll talk about that when I get to my beer. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that is so awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and uh, well, we I, have. Some... I don't know if you'll see this beer yet. Oh yeah, Kevin, yeah. You, Kevin, you caught you you cost me a thousand dollars. What? How'd you how'd you cost a thousand dollars? Oh, because I survived. Kevin, yeah, because you survived. Sorry, I was having some audio issues. Yeah, we I had a we had a Deadpool going, and I had that you were going to kick the uh, the old bucket over in jolly old England. But uh, <laughs> wow. welcome, welcome back, dude. We're glad to have you. And good day, oh. mate. Oh, good day, mate. Oh, cheerio, <laughs> yeah, mate. Thanks for having me here. Oh wow. Well, we're definitely glad to have you back, uh, safe and sound, uh, friend. And, and, and I I can't believe that you actually you were. Uh, what was it? Two thirty in the morning. You were actually able to jump yes. on. So kudos yeah. to you. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was a rough day, dude. Yeah, I mean, if you notice, I was, you know, in and out a little bit at certain points of the show. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that wasn't embarrassing at all. But that's all right. It's all in the name of beer and baseball. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's all in the pursuit of fun, right? You know, it, I mean, sometimes it just was a little bit of a lullaby and I was just lulling myself. You know? <laughs> I mean, th th that Sticky Pop was a good beer, though. Rare that I had beers I really enjoyed in the in yeah. Miles in London, but that was a good one. Fantastic. Well, we're glad yeah, to have you face, back. London, USA, USA, USA. USA. <laughs> U.S. and A. U.S. and A. Uh, yes. All right. Oh, when it comes to beer, it's USA. Let's do it. Yes, let's do it. This is another Tuesday night. That means it's another weekly baseball brew crew podcast. We are a little bit country. We are a little bit lock and lull, keeping baseball history alive, one craft beer at a time. Wherever you are watching us, uh, please give us a like and a follow. Um, if you have a friend next to you, have them subscribe as well. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers as soon as possible. And uh, and if you love beer with your baseball, please tell a friend as well. Some housekeeping before we start. Um, actually, where, let me let me check my uh, yeah yeah. Let me put this up here. I'm gonna add this to the stream. Yeah, we've done this 137 weeks straight, which uh, I'm sure is a record somewhere um, for, 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 for all this. But we've enjoyed doing it. And uh, yeah, so but we have um, something here. Actually, let me let me back up a little bit. I'm actually going to do our lineup card before I tell you our special news. Okay. Um Angelo Trinidad um, will our content, our VP of content development. He'll actually he's actually on assignment this week, and he will return next week. We actually have a Christmas show next week, uh, which will be exchanging gifts and having a lot of fun. Um, and then our next show after that is the one I'll say right after lineup. But let's let's see our field correspondent and senior research analyst back from uh, over the pond, as it were. It's Kevin Lyon. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Good to be here, and I was glad to hashtag do the research and and uh, firsthand research, drinking research of beers in London. Yes, yes, and and uh, you 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 actually um, came to the conclusion that the beer here is much better than the beer there. Yeah, sorry to say that, England. I'm sure there's so many people from London right now. If I I might not survive the evening, Jack. Hopefully, you, hopefully it still counts if I die tonight. <laughs> Because of me threatening how poor, I shouldn't say poor. There were definitely a couple years I had that were just ugh, bad. It was bad. But maybe it's because I'm spoiled where I live here in beautiful Anaheim, California. Yeah. You know, we have some wonderful breweries. You know, Michael's been getting checking out many breweries around this area in the last few months and just basking it all in with me. But I mean, it's better here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, that's okay. And, but we'll, we'll, we're going to have a hard one if we ever go to Canada. Um, we're, that's going to be a hard one to, uh, you know, I bet they have some really great beer out there. So we'll have to definitely, when we go to the different countries, we'll have to definitely figure it out. But England was kind of a loss, at, but who knows? We, it may... I, had, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't think all of them were bad. Right. There, there, was a couple, there was only a couple that I was just like, I almost couldn't even drink it. It was just, yeah. and IPAs weren't really IPAs. Everything is 5% ish for the yep. most part. What? So that just gets a, <laughs> yes and uh uh we would be remiss if we didn't uh yeah so hey it was it was worth the effort uh you, and you had I, and it, was, it was a good journey yes exactly so up next is the goodwill ambassador and the sultan of swig here at the baseball brew crew podcast it is cowboy jack durango he's got mike in hand I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own more than you will ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is a thousand subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Welcome to the show, boys and girls. As the saying goes, if you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. And there's nobody dumber than Cowboy Jack. Let him hear it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. I love it. And I, I love your sentiments. It's it's the, the gift that keeps on giving uh, a thousand That's subscribers. Right. That's <laughs> right. So tell a friend, smash the subscribe button. Oh. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. We, we appreciate it. I'm Michael Mondragon, your humble host for these festivities. And uh, we, we have a fun show for you tonight. But first, I wanted to um, I wanted to do this. I'm going to uh, put this up. It is time for the 2022 Diamond Icons. So uh, this is the second annual uh, award. Uh, for those who don't know and didn't see it last year, uh, the Diamond Icons um, honor top members of the baseball community that has greatly impacted our year here at the Baseball Brew Crew Podcast. So um, last year, the nominees, or I'm sorry, not, not the nominees, but the uh, inductees, uh, Reggie Jackson, friend of the show, friend of the show, Doc Ellis, uh, the late Doc Ellis, Bob Eucher. Um, we also had uh, legacy award winners um, to honor uh, fallen members of our baseball community. We also had the silver chugger awards, which uh, to honor outstanding achievement uh, in the field of entertainment. So, um, what we did was we, we we're doing it kind of unconventionally. Um, so actually let me, I'm going to add this right here. So if you go to beerbaseball.com, the very first, um, uh, uh, I guess it's, uh, entry, uh, here you can go, you can actually watch our other episodes here. Um, but the very first entry at the top here, if you click onto that, these are the nominees oh. for 2022, and you can actually read all about them. Oh, yes. Here's a new candidate. Uh, since we had three go in, we had to add three. And then we actually took one out because um, that uh, that person is actually in a, uh, being honored. So we actually had four spots open. As you can see, Billy Martin was um, – was as put in Bob Watson was a nominee last year, Bobby Valentine, but you can go through this and learn about all 32 of the nominees here. And you can actually see uh, videos on them. And uh, you know, the most talked about moments, um, uh, Johnny bench oh. is also a nominee. I was surprised because he wasn't one last year became a, a friend of the show. And uh, so we had to put him in there and uh, yeah, he, Good videos there. Look at this. Yeah, yes, it, it has some great videos. Uh, Jose Canseco, a friend of the show, okay. and uh, okay. let's go. The other one we put oh, in, uh, nice. Larry right. Doby. 
Yes. Yes. We well wanted, definitely wanted to honor him. Lars Newtbar, uh, one of Angelo's favorites. Um, so Newtbar, dude. I yes. Love that guy. Exactly. More. Oh, I forgot about, I I forgot about Mal Fitzman. I forgot about that. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's a wonderful moment. Yeah. So you can read all about these or uh, watch the videos and look at this. Um, you know, Pete Rose, I can, you know, we talk about Pete Rose all the time. A, a lot. lot. Yes. Uh, I'm just waiting to see who our new people are. Who yes. Are ones here? And as you, as you go down here, you got Randy Johnson, the chickens on there. Oh, um, boo. And then, boo. Oh, look, look who's right beneath them. There we go. Tommy Lasorda is also now a 2022 nominee. And look at all of the videos that you can watch oh. of him that we've talked about this year. <laughs> the side um, performance. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Fun. It's so fun. So, yeah. So go in there. You can actually read about all these. And so in two weeks, on the 27th, we will actually be uh, very – uh, so we do this kind of in a weird way. We don't like have a, a nomination. Uh, what we do is we actually uh, put all of these uh, players into a um, into a almost like a bracket. OK, and then we mix them up and then they pair off and there will be it'll be myself, Cowboy Jack Durango, Kevin Lyon, Angela Trinidad and Ian from if sports card. So we have five people. So, you know, it's going to be a three to two. So there'll always be a, a deciding. I did, yeah. I don't remember. Oh, yo, we did have five, I think last year too. Didn't yeah. We? Cause oh, Dan Daniel um, was the, uh, uh, from Halo Haven was, was uh, our fifth. So what we do is we pair them off and then they eventually have to make it to the final. And uh, so there, then there'll be, there'll, there'll be three um, that are, that are inducted in. And so there's a lot of, so for instance, Morgana could go against Ozzy Smith and we'd have to pick oh. one or the other. So it's, it's very, very tricky the way we kind of do it, but I, it's a lot of oh, fun. Yes. So definitely uh, check us out on the 27th. Uh, we'll be doing that live and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Oh, I've got a lot of hashtag doing the research and yep. going back and seeing just who yeah, I'm going to vote for. Pick well, my and, winners, dude. Yeah. And Ian just joined in. So Ian, you have some research to do too. Do you have any more info about the other awards yet that you can give us, uh, Michael? Yeah, you know, um, or you'll wait for the show to tell us about that. You know what? I, I'm going to wait for the show because they're they're actually um, they're, they're some there's some fun ones, and I think the the inductees and in the in the side ones uh, are actually going to be super cool, and I think you're going to get a kick out of it. So uh, no. I actually don't want to blow anything. So okay, uh, no worries. Yeah, uh, I, I will give I will give you one spoiler. Okay, okay. are you ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. We are going to do the. Best singer on the beer baseball blog that opens the show every week with a parody song, and the nominee is me, and I'm gonna win. <laughs> wow! <laughs> well, you, you definitely won in a very loaded bracket. Uh... <laughs> Listen, I'm so I'm so good. They invent brackets for me, Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you so much for joining. It. And and we're looking forward to it. Ian's going to be in it. So, uh Ian go to uh beerbaseball.com um and you can uh in fact I'm going to put it right here. Yeah, go to beerbaseball.com. Go to that first uh entry and uh learn about your candidates for the 2022 Diamond Icons. Hashtag do the research. That's it. It's all there for you. So you can yeah. you can find out. All right. So um let's do it. Let's find out what we are drinking for this week. Uh as tradition on the show, we always bring a new and unique craft beer to review and enjoy. So what are you drinking tonight? Let us know in the chat what you're drinking out there. We'd like to know. And uh I'm gonna start with this awesome one from that Kevin Lyon. I, 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 this this one's kind of bonkers, is it? So I literally landed on uh, LAX uh, at 8.05 p.m. And El Segundo Brewing is about 15-minute drive away. They closed at 10. I'm like, all right, I got a goal. Got to get through customs, get to my car, parked in the, off, get parked in the parking garage, I take a shuttle to, get there in time to get this beer in particular. You ready to know why, Cowboy Jack Durango? Uh, because you were the uh, towel boy for the Canaries in 1976. <laughs> so it's very special to you. You have a personal you, connection to the you, beer. Can you please, Michael? Can you please? Um, I would have to say... Oh, no. Not while I'm drinking, man. <laughs> so 
it turns out um, the gentleman on this on this uh, can here, Bob Croxall, is actually the owner of El Segunda Brewing. So the thing that what people what? know, yes, that's the owner of, of El Segunda Brewing. And El Segunda Brewing is best known for making the uh, the Stone Cold uh, Broken Skull IPA and the uh, Broken Skull American Lager. And so it turns out they the, the wife ski apparently let them know, hey, he actually played one season for the Sioux Falls Canaries. Wow. And it was an independent team, which at this point was in a league called the Northern League. And here's the fun part. This team still exists. Nah. And so this the, the Northern, Northern League shut down. And it's now in a league called the American Association of America, American Association, which is why I'm wearing this shirt right here, the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, because that is another team in that same uh, league. Uh, it's an independent team. So he played one season in uh, 1995. One thing that you are particularly going to love, let me give you a little background about the Canaries here, because like I said, independent team. I believe on that team, Michael Mondragon is a, uh, was a very great baseball player for several years with the Dodgers and also a longtime close personal friend of OJ Simpson. That would be Pedro Guerrero. No was, kidding. Was wow. on that team for a few years. And I, I remember right, they were on the team at the same time. Wow. And, um, they're mostly- Chavo, Chavo Guerrero's brother, Pedro Guerrero? <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, going to the family business. And looking through, like, the only other, like, uh, an old Dodger pitcher named Steve Howe played for them briefly at one point. Um, they have retired a few people's numbers, but one of them in particular is a fun one. Um, a guy who played for them later in his after his major league career would be pitcher, not quarterback, pitcher Pat Mahomes. Oh, for the wow. his numbers after he retired at, for the Sioux Falls. Canaries. No kidding! Wow, so on, that's why you hashtag did the research. You know what I mean? That you is know, really you really did hashtag do the research. Yeah, Holy cow, yeah. Kevin! I, I had to. I was really curious about this. So the front, this is a replica, you know, reprint of his baseball card. Because you've noticed the nice touch there. El Segun, they, they made their own little. Yeah, you know, it looks like they're sponsoring it. It's yeah, cool. exactly. It's a really cool touch here. Yeah. What I love, though, if you look there, it says number 25 in the corner of his jersey. It says number 14. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So here's the rim, all right? And on the back of the can, um, do you have a picture of the can? Oh, thank you. It actually gives, like, his info, like, that's right, throws right. And uh, I'll, I'll read you what it says there here. So the, the dashing young lad on this label is none other than the owner of our brewery, Rob Coxall. I hope I pronounced that right. Yet before he became a master brewer, he was hurling rockets and minor league ball. This was supposed to be a 50th birthday surprise, but his card had his birthday wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they got the card from, uh, oh, from wow. his wife. His number is also wrong, but that's another story. Either way, please join us in raising a pint as we wish Rob the happiest of 50th birthdays again. That is <laughs> amazing. Another great thing here. I don't think you see that. You see the ERA 9.14? Yes. So that apparently yeah. was the actual ERA. So this is a double IPA coming in at 9.14%. That is so amazing. And, and, wow. and what a terrible ERA. You, you give up what, like a, a run a, a run an inning. Uh, so uh, um, more than that. So what I'm seeing is that he pitched 23 games that season for that 9.14 ERA, 21 two thirds innings, uh, 22 earned runs. So there you yeah. go, just over uh, and uh, get a couple home runs, eight strikeouts. Oof, you know. But you that know is- what? Hey, the guy played professional baseball. So that's right. Cheers, that's Rob. Right. Happy birthday! Yeah. Happy birthday! I lose. Yeah, this beer is. Oh my goodness! Might be a beer of the year here. Oh, probably okay. because it's. I had it. Uh, I got on draft and I bought a four pack to go. And now it's like, if this is as good as the story behind it, this is, might be my favorite beer of the year. So. Well, I might, I might have to have because you, you gifted me uh, one of these, so I might have to have it so I can put it in my beer of the years for. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the show. Actually, uh, the very first show of 2023, we're going to be doing our beers of the year. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, uh, my brother is drinking a Corona Premier. Oh, yeah, he, he's in the premiere section. I like that. Nice, dude. Wow. Nice. I am. I love it. Hi, Greg, dude. Man. High roller in the house, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, Greg Hall is drinking a peppermint shake. Uh, I, I hope that's uh, that's uh, craft beer related. because they, they have a milkshake IPAs, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. 
Yeah, very. It's a, it's it's very clever. And, and uh, we, I actually, we we're trying to figure this out because I, I, I think I was, I was half asleep, and I, I was, I saw this on El Segundo's a brewing thing, and I just, I literally just put it in the chat. I'm like, no, you, you, uh, ta- yeah, in the, in the chat of the post, you tagged me. Yeah, and, and, and I realized like, oh, I got, <laughs> I got to get this. I have to get this. Yeah, I'm so glad um, you did. Yeah, El Segundo is about this brewery is like about 10, 15 minutes south of LAX. But for me, you know, it would take me almost an hour to get, you know, to get there on a normal day. So I'm like, oh, I'm right there. I might as well grab it. That's amazing. So good call. And, and uh, again, kudos to you for for having the wherewithal to be, you know, come from an international flight and still go to a brewery. Right. Now. You are you are the ultimate. You're the ultimate male uh, when it comes. Oh. To- Thank you. Dude, that's a man's man right there. That like, is. That is. That is. I a feel boy. inferior, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's called determination, sir. That's good. It's called right. determination. That is fantastic. Uh, Jack, you have a very interesting one oh, here. Uh, and I, I 9.14 uh, ABV. I can't believe I'm going to say this. This yeah. one's higher. Yeah. I, I'm not happy about <laughs> yeah. that. But I'll, I'll let you go. I'll let you get away. Gentlemen, Fate Brewing Company was established in Scottsdale, Arizona in 2012. That's 10 years ago. Their motto, nay, their mission is to provide a place to celebrate new jobs, relationships, good friends, and happy families, while at the same time brewing top shelf, solid craft beers. One of their gyms is this barrel-aged honey nut barley wine with a 14% ABV. Oh, my. 14%. It has a 35 IBU. This barley wine is brewed with local peanuts and aged for over two years. Kevin, I said two years. Can you believe that? How are they going to top that, you ask? Well, they age it in freshly dumped high west bourbon barrels. You're going to get slammed with rich notes of salted caramel and roasted peanuts with a smooth, smoky whiskey finish. Seasoned drinkers, belly up to the bar at the brewery. Sip on a honey nut barley wine and tell them the Valley of the Sun's favorite son, Cowboy Jack Durango, sent you. Nice. nice. Wow. Right. That's insane. Like, like you don't whiskey. drink that. You do shots of this beer. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I specified seasoned drinkers because it takes a refined, deep palate to enjoy this beer. But if you do, this is a good one. Now, Jack and Michael, uh, was that uh, all right? Michael, have you ever had a barley wine? And Jack, was that your first time having a barley wine? That was not my first time having a barley wine. I made the mistake one night on a uh, brewery tour to finish it off with a quick slam of a barley wine. And <laughs> needless to say, oh, I yeah. learned my lesson, boys. Yeah. I learned yeah. my lesson. Luckily, now I knew what it was. I knew how to have a just a sip ski. And it'll do you. It's uh, yeah. kept me warm all night. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, Greg Hall says, uh, you know, peanuts. Is this a Thai beer? Yeah. <laughs> um, there's so I have had barley wines. And actually, when when uh, my girlfriend and I, when we, we basically got into the craft beer scene because we were doing social media for a craft beer, uh, a kind of event. They used to put them, uh, all the breweries together and have events in Santa Monica, California. So we kind of got like jumped into this kind of uh, great culture. And, and it's like, you know, twist my arm to have some craft beer. That's where everything kind of went crazy uh, for me, especially when I'm like, oh, my God, we should I should do craft beer and baseball. But. One of the things that that one of the first breweries when we were doing our research, uh, in quotes, was a place called Rev Brewing, which is no longer there, unfortunately. And actually, it started as a uh, winery, and they had a whole bunch of, I believe, barley wines and and actually wines. But then they started kind of um, opening up a little bit to uh, what was popular at the time, which was taking the. They had a whole bunch of these barrels. And they would just age all everything in the barrel. So that became really popular. And that was super popular at the time. This would have been like 2016, maybe 15, 16. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of places doing that. And I think that um, 
what's the brewery the uh, the brewery uh taro uh they do well, a lot I, yeah i think that i think Tarot, taro's closed down like there's just the brewery yeah. oh the really oh that's that's yeah. that's sad to see and uh what what's the other place that uh beachwood had beachwood blendery beachwood, beachwood blendery and i don't know if they fully reopen they make a lot of like soury kind of beers and like specialty beers and yeah you can even throw um Oh, Phantom Carriage, which also made a lot of sense. They're no longer around either, unfortunately. Another Cassidy yes, film. and I was, uh, we were talking about, um, I, I was talking with someone just, just, uh, just this weekend about uh, Phantom Carriage, and I was saying how uh, Cascade. We we actually went to go see. There's a, a great sour beer uh, place from uh, from Portland called Cascade Brewing, and. So like a lot of these taste it, th this type of beer and, and uh, barley wine and, and all that stuff. It's, it's why it, 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 we, we talk about like porters and all these other ones being like the deep end. This one is like the sweet and uh, deep end. Basically it's super sweet. Um, it's a little bit like it, again, you could probably like drink this and like think that you're fine and you wobble out of there. I mean, this, this, yes. this right here is, is lethal. What, what I'm, what we're looking at right here. Lethal. Yeah. <laughs> lethal that's a yeah. lethal dose dude yeah, yeah. And, and let me and here i'll tell you my, my my dumb mistake of a barley wine i was in oceanside there's a place called bear republic down there by the train station and it's like yogurt land except it's beer so oh. you just made by the ounce yes and i had to catch a metrolink train uh and i had about 15 minutes 50 made 20 minutes tops to get the train it was about about eight minute walk so i was like oh i'll just get something to fish me off let me get some barley wine Oh boy. And I got like, maybe like a few ounces of it. And I was like, Oh my God, I don't have time. And I, I and I had to drink it kind of quick and, and run to catch my train. I barely got on the train and bare and barely avoided just puking. Uh, yeah. <laughs> decorating oh. the train, if you will, barely missed decorating the train. Ooh, yeah. That was, that was, that was not the smart. And then I'm like, yeah, barley wine. No, I'm good. Yeah. I, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a big sushi fan. So it's like, I always say like, you know, it, for sushi, it's like, you know, some people think that California rolls is like sushi. Oh. It's like that, that's, you know, so, but if, if you're going to have like uni or a uh, sea urchin or something like that, that is the barley wines of, of, of sushi. Yeah. So it's oh, like, you know, you I don't want to start with that. You oh, want to no. start with like, you know, salmon uh, or yellowtail gosh, or something like oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> Ease your way in. And yeah, uh, I yeah, had, the sea urchin definitely got me. Oh, like, oh, I had yeah. on Sunday. Don't do sushi on a Sunday, guys. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. If, if if you would like to hear more about how Kevin gets nauseous on certain foods, <laughs> find him on Twitter <laughs> at El Hawk and Lowell. or Instagram. If yeah, you want exactly. This exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, so my my beer for tonight. Thank you for that. I, that's awesome. I, I look forward to uh, uh, going to Fate and uh, yeah, Greg Hall living in Arizona. We'll definitely check uh, out as well. Yeah, we're, we're we got to check that one out, especially if we're doing a ball game on uh, in Scottsdale area. Heck oh yeah. brother, Heck yeah. so good, so good. So my beer for tonight is the Mucho Gusto Gatos uh, from yes. Everywhere beer, beer Company in Orange, California. A collab with Rip Beer out of Huntington Beach, California. This one, I, and I feel like, oh, I'm I'm the wimp here with an eight point six. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, dude, sit on the porch because you can't run with the big dogs. All right, champ. <laughs> I got two breweries uh, making magic over here, and they can only pull off an eight eight point one six or eight point six, I should say. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So this is a West Coast double IPA made with Citra Strata. Idaho 7, Cryo, and get this, an experimental hop called HBC 586. <laughs> it's super secret stuff here, guys. Um, this is absolutely outstanding. Uh, this is, um, and the thing about Everywhere Beer is it you can only get it at Everywhere Beer if you go to Orange County. I don't think that they have any distribution anywhere, but right. it's so worth going and finding can, out. I think you can order it if you live in California. You can have it, to, you know, you can order it through the mail, but I don't, that's, I don't that's know. false really advertising. Speak. They say right there on the can everywhere, dude. Exactly, on, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that brewery's only been open for about three, four months and definitely already up there for one of the better, one of the better ones we have in our area. Yes. Yes. And uh, we're definitely spoiled. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, we don't know that much about rip. We, we actually should make a, a pilgrimage out to rip sometime. 
Yeah, I don't know where it is exactly, Huntington Beach, but I've had a few of their beers. Um, they were very friendly with the Red Beard Tap Room that you and I have right. went to in Anaheim. Right. They actually made a beer, I, I believe, for them too. Oh, the okay. Point. Oh, yeah. that's that's super cool. Yeah. So definitely uh, check this out if you ever see it in the. Uh, it's more in the Orange County area. Um, if if you're uh, over in that area. If you're in Orange, go. They're open like 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. A great brewery. Good people. All right, so let's do it. This is this day in baseball history for December 13th. Absolutely. Let me switch this a little bit. All right, so some fun stuff here. Right. So December 13th, 1911, New York politician James E. Gaffney and former player Montgomery Ward. Yes, Montgomery Ward, he is actually a Hall of Famer elected in 1964 by the Veterans Committee. They purchased the National League franchise, the Boston Doves. All right. So um, this is interesting because, of course, when I think of Montgomery Ward, I think of this. <laughs> so Montgomery Ward and company was a world pioneering mail order business and later a leading department store chain. And uh, it still runs today. What? Uh, the current Montgomery Ward is, is a national online shopping mail order catalog retailer that started several years before, uh, after the original Montgomery Ward shut down. They wow. actually shut down like, like tw uh, 2001, I think. Huh. So, but, but I know, uh, I'm like growing up, like Montgomery, again, this is totally off topic, but it's like, I started like looking at, it's like, oh, I, yeah. I, no, this wasn't my. This was in the fifties, but uh, but Kevin, this will be all all. Uh, oh, it's familiar. I, I, yeah, yeah. You, you recognize those people in the car right there. Well, um, I, I, my car is the one next to it. <laughs> the other one, right there. Yes, and not to be confused with mail order. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, oh well, if they if there's a mail order catalog with Ian on it, sign me. <laughs> up. I'm putting that one in the shopping cart. Click. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, James Gaffney, the original international man of mystery. Uh, oh. I want to know what's under that that uh, little, you know his hat. <laughs> oh, Probably a bird. Yes, Probably a canary. <laughs> <laughs> well, and but this is this is what I remember. So it's oh, like yeah. it was like J.C. Penney, Jemco, um, Sears. You know, uh, Sears, exactly. So, like, there was all in Montgomery Ward uh, was another one, and um, so this is what this is what I remember. Uh, yes, uh, Chris Town. Oh my gosh, hey, Chris, we had our first Chris Town uh, reference here, which no one knows what Chris Town is. I know. Get no. this: <clears throat> it, there's there's an episode of the Monkeys when it's the one of the last Monkeys episodes. They actually do a two part where it's the Monkeys actually play a concert. And they're actually running around in Chris Town Mall in Phoenix. No it was, way. It was at the Coliseum where they at last last episode and last, and last con the concert was. So wow. um, where I bought my first stereo. That's amazing. That's so awesome. Um, anyway, and uh, also, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, it was in Bill and Ted's. It was uh, the San Dimas Mall, Chris Town Mall. If I'm wow. not mistaken. Um, wow. <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think I am. <laughs> seldom wrong dude disco seldom machine wrong. michael mondragon is I, I, seldom wrong i challenge here, you to hashtag do here. i gotta get it out of my head <laughs> so this okay so this is weird so the um i am not sure that this was the second part of this so the team was called the boston doves they actually changed it to the Boston Braves, and it was all because of the politician was in this thing called the uh, it was Tammany, Tammany Hall, which was it had some sort of Democratic um, affiliation. I could not really figure it out, and they eventually uh, kind of got phased out in the '60s. Uh, but you can see here they they had this like little um, this this medal, but they actually did it because of this. It was actually they they, they oh. named it the Braves after just because of the the uh, symbolism here. So again, I didn't really understand the the all the logistics of it. So what why do that when we can go back to Montgomery Ward? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, 
I, um, Kevin, since yes, you sir. are a, a not only a student of history, you <laughs> witness history your whole life. Um, and um, so I'm going to ask you this question. Which came first, Montgomery Ward, the retail store, or Montgomery Ward, the baseball player? Oh, no. <laughs> That's for later. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Which one do you think? My gut's telling me the store. I'm guessing I'm doing mail order. It looked like on that catalog something about like 1880s or 1890s. I'm like, so I'm going to go with that. Okay. So you're going to go with the catalog. I believe that, I believe that is the older of the two. Okay. And Greg Hall corrects me. It was Metro Center. That was the San Dimas Mall. You're absolutely right on that one. Um, well. I'm clearly I'm wrong. <laughs> no. Um, well, actually, you are wrong. Oh, come on. 1872. 1878. I am right. Get and Montgomery Ward was born in 1872. And and it's funny because if you look on his Wikipedia page, he was born in uh 1860. Oh my gosh. Ah, come on. So I was looking at his I'm, playing days. I'm like, look, I won the playing days. Come on. Yes. So so Montgomery Ward, the baseball player, born in 1860. Montgomery Ward, 150 years as of this year. There wow. You go. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Celebrating 150 years of Christmas. There you go. Yes. Yes. Wow. And so did that Ward's credit card, by the way. Get your credit card. <laughs> I, 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 remember... still, I still have collectors trying to get an, an extra 75 cents for me from a purchase from 1888. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you still have a Dillard's credit card. You have uh you have oh, a diner's club. Thank you. I'll thank you throw diner's club. club. <laughs> thank you. Very good, sir. <laughs> and you also have Telly Savalas, the players club. That's right. <laughs> uh, who loves you, baby? December 13th, 1954, the Dodgers trade third baseman Billy Cox. And Southpaw Preacher Rowe, who will retire uh, before the season uh, begins, to the Orioles for two minor league prospects. Um, I, if I told you their names, you wouldn't know them. And fifty thousand dollars. Jeez, that's a lot so, of money. Nineteen fifty-four. Wow. It, exactly. Give me that dollar amount again. So it was fifty thousand dollars in nineteen fifty-four. So are you going to do your magic math? I'm going to do my magic math here. Right. And then they don't even get one of the players. <laughs> the guy right. retires and play with the Orioles. Right. That's rough. $553,367. Wow, okay. So what do you think they did with that money? Oh, this 1954. I yeah. Probably bought some pomade and a, a little gelato. <laughs> A little jalopy, and they went down to the soda jerk. I, I figured they opened up the Montgomery Ward catalog and bought some. Uh, some yes, yes, that would be that would be an obvious, obvious, right? Yeah. Well, what they did was they actually oh. Brooklyn will use the cash um, as a bonus to sign another left-hander from Lafayette High School with control problems named Sandy Koufax. Oh. <laughs> From the cafeteria squad. <laughs> that kills me reading that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Isn't that awesome? That is a weird. That's a that's a strange purchase. So he had control problems. He comes on to he goes on to be one of the greats. Yes. And they yeah. purchased him for fifty grand, dude. In nineteen fifty four yeah. money. Yeah. But uh, you know, um, I was telling you, Jack, about um, I watched Facey Nolan, a documentary about Nolan Ryan on Netflix, and Nolan when he was. Coming up, that you know, had this, a lot of control problems as well, you know, early on in his career. Right. I've seen some. I've seen some on the field fights that suggest that he always had control problems. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he What's was defending up? himself. Yeah. What's up? Yes. <laughs> and by the way, good call on the pomade. I see a lot of pomade in this. Picture. Oh yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that 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 is Vaseline up in that hair, dude. <laughs> it probably is. Yeah. Those. I bet that I bet that hairdo's flammable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So December thirteenth, nineteen fifty six. 
the Dodgers again trade Jackie Robinson the uh, to the crosstown rivals, the New York Giants, for pitcher Dick Littlefield and thirty five thousand dollars. So, okay, what? so in, interesting because I, I put it here and it says like it's thirty thousand dollars. So again, logistics here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so according to some accounts, Jackie had already privately uh, decided uh, to leave the game to work for Chalk Full of Nuts. Now, oh. you, nobody will know what that is uh, except for a, a, a few people in this room. Um, but, but, but he actually publicly retired from baseball uh, rather than accepting the trade. So... Of course, I can't let the chock full of nuts thing go. So uh, for those not aware, chock full of nuts was actually a coffee. And as you see here, it says, um, in 1920, we sold nuts. 1930s, we sold nuts and coffee. Now we don't sell nuts. We just sell coffee. So again, this is still going to this day. And they actually had uh, these shops in uh, New York where you could uh, get it. But actually... It's interesting because I found out about Chock Full of Nuts from um, actually this. It was Wacky Packages I because it, it was Chock Full of Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> That's how I found out about it. And, and this card right here from Wacky Packages is from 1973. Wow. So I'm not, I, I remember having these cards when I was super young. And, uh, but this, that's why I remember uh, Chock Full of Nuts. Um, <laughs> But actually, I didn't know this, but Jackie Robinson actually took that job. It wasn't it wasn't like a kayfabe job. He actually wow. vice president for them. Nice, yeah. Which was um, so so chock full of nuts uh, was a familiar New York brand. Started as a company that sold nuts, um, peanuts, and, and other types of nuts, not, not like uh, nuts and bolts, right? right. Uh, before switching to coffee and operating coffee shops, so. Very, very interesting. Yeah, and but look at him though. I mean, he—I don't remember how old he was when he came up, but man, look at look—he looked like Major League Baseball eight. Like he only played like about eight years. Man, it aged him. Yeah, look, <laughs> you know? look, look at when he was leaving. Like, look yeah. at that. Look how yeah. odd he looks. Like, oh my gosh! Like man. I have to ask I have to research. Remember how old he was when he started playing ball? But I don't—I think he started at a not. A relatively young age. I gotta look real quick. Let me see how old Jack Robinson was here. Yeah. Jack Robinson was born in 1919. So yeah. he's almost 40 years old here. Right. So think about that. When he first debuted in 47, he was already almost 30 years old. He right. Was like 28. And yeah. here he is, you know, he's like, you know, a mere like, you know, eight years later, you know, like, oh my gosh, what happened to him, man? I mean, he was living a hard life, to say the least, which is trying to just get through everything. Well, uh, yeah, it was, um, and, and we talked about Larry Doby before uh, being on our ballot, you know, and he was going through exactly the same thing. And there was only this guy that could relate to what he was going through, which is yeah. absolutely outstanding. Um, uh, all right. So oh, you, you can have another one. This is, this is uh, another part of uh, baseball history. So December 13th, 1969, Kurt Flood attends the Players Association Executive Board meeting to seek financial assistance in his attempt to sue Major League Baseball because of the reserve clause that violates federal antitrust laws. Although skeptical about the suit's outcome, the player reps vote 25 to nothing to support the recently traded outfielder who refuses to report to the Phillies after being dealt uh, by the Cardinals. So I think, so the, if this is December 13th, I think it's like um, Christmas Eve that is another big milestone of this case. Um, and basically, Kurt Flood responsible uh, for initiating what would now be known as free agency. Wow. Yep. And, you know, and, you know, you also mentioned Marvin Miller helping him out with, you know, helping out with a lot of that going on too. And because uh, I think he was in charge. I, he, I, I know Marv Miller actually made it to the Hall of Fame eventually for what he did for baseball. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think he had something new at the Player Association as well, if I remember right. I know I've read about him, but I'm just – I didn't hashtag do the research on that one. Sorry. Yeah. This, this <laughs> is, and uh, this guy put his career on the line yeah. Yeah. to fight this. And, uh, and He was a great player too, but it's just unfortunately yep. this, this just – man, this whole thing definitely did not help his cause. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, so I very much right. Marvin Miller was the executive director of the Major League Baseball Player Association, so he was helping. Yes, out right. With that as right. Well. Uh, and, and, and definitely a a a f- uh, figure in baseball that should be more well known as Kurt Absolutely. Flood. So definitely um, uh, do the research on on, on Kurt Flood. He has a great story. Yes. All right, so December 13th, 1975, the Tigers trade Mickey Lolich and outfielder, not, not not one of the Baldwins, Billy Baldwin, not the one you're thinking of, to the Mets for outfielder Rusty Staub and pitcher Bill Laxton. New York's new Southpaw will post an 8-13 and record spending just one year uh, in New York, while Detroit will enjoy a, a steady performances from their recently acquired um, outfielder and DH who will bat 275 in his three plus seasons in the Motor City. Uh, I just I I love these cards uh, that were um, the effort that went into it um, was just <laughs> as bad as it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's terrible here. Yeah. Airbrushing wasn't what it used to be. No, and it didn't 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 Rusty Staub go on to be a like a really good commentator? No. Um, he was actually more, um, known with the Montreal Expos. Uh, he was actually Le Grand Le Orange. Right. I like uh, how they kind of wrote it and like, they kind of did yeah. have French, you know, like French, you know, I guess I don't know what it would be Spanglish. It was like, it like English and French, Le Grand <laughs> Orange yeah. goes to the Motor City. Yes. And uh, but but he was actually um, he was a really good more, ball player though. He was yeah, a really good, good ball player. player. More known for kind of like his his look more than oh, his uh, than anything that they did. And and uh, but he was super popular in for the Montreal and actually in Canada at the time. Um, so yeah, but he played for a lot of teams. And uh, yeah, and, and, and here it says like December twelfth, nineteen seventy five. So right. again, the the dates a little bit in, in question here. <laughs> Hey, you know what? All the hazy, all the history is hazy history, baby. Yeah, more or less. You know, right? Yeah. So December 13th, 2000. In the year 2000. (laughs) I I got to put that on. That's a good one. Uh, The Red Sox outbidding Indians. uh, I'm sorry. The Red Sox outbidding the Indians signed free agent Manny Ramirez to a reported eight-year, $160 million contract. Well, if you look at the other little uh, uh, side here, Texas size deal for Rodriguez, the very lucrative deal pales in comparison to Alex Rodriguez's $252 million 10-year agreement with the Rangers. Uh, that was announced exactly at the same time. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. So Gosh, I, I, I love A Rod. I love that man. <laughs> um, nowadays, uh, nowadays, you know, a decent pitcher can get twenty million dollars. Right. So <laughs> that was how much? How much money did he make there? Two hundred and fifty-two million dollars for ten years in two thousand. My lord, that is. That is four hundred thirty-five million six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in today's money. Crazy. Oh, four hundred. You know what? That does million. actually match, though. Like you saw, like a Max, right. was it Max Scherzer got like forty million dollars. Well, oh, uh, man, all right. And, and Aaron Judge just got around that too. He so. got forty. He got forty mil for ten years. Forty yeah. mil a year, almost. So yeah. So it does. It, it, that does hold up way more than you know the Vince Gallagher from the fifties because just such a different good. Quality. Just look at how handsome he is right there. <laughs> so hey, Jack, you know you need to give a thank you to for that deal. Who's that? Kurt Flood. Well, Kurt thank Flood, you, Kurt right? Flood. Good That's callback. It. Good He's callback. Alex. Yeah, totally. So it's not the last we've heard of Alex Rodriguez, by the way. Oh, no. So, this <laughs> is, bum, this bum, is, so as a Cardinal fan, this is a very interesting one, and it actually um, uh, has, a, has an interesting uh, twist at the end. So the Cardinals, in, on December 13th, 2003, trade outfielder J.D. Drew, along with catcher Eli Marrero, to the Braves for three pitchers, Ray King, Jason Marquis, and Adam Wainwright. Oh, Atlanta's new outfielder will have a solid season, but will stay with the team for only one season. And um, 
Adam Wainwright, uh, seen as a youngster here, just uh, signed a one-year contract with the Cardinals to come back in 2023. And he did pretty wow. well in 2022. He did. He did. Well. I, was, he did. I, was, I was shocked. I, you know, because I have a fan, I have our fans saying, I'm like, oh gosh, I've had a Wayne Wright. I'm like, he actually did good. I was like, he did. On. He did. Yeah, he, he really helped you secure third place, didn't he? No, I uh, fourth place, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Fourth place. You know, well, there's a big difference because fourth place gets zero. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and who won first place? Moving he, on. He can't even say it. He won't say yeah. it. He, he muted yeah. himself. <laughs> we all know. No, we all know. I was going to tell him. I was going. I said something that would. Oh. Be, uh, <laughs> keep, it, keep it. Keep it. We're, we're working clean tonight, brother. We're no, working Mr. clean. Number, I'm sorry. The Mister Number One of the Fantasy Baseball League. Your there one you and only nickname, Jarrett. Shots <laughs> mm, mm. fired. Shots fired. <laughs> there the cussing. <laughs> is that? Is it? <laughs> well. Oh, we there it is. So. <laughs> no. Literally on the same day, December 13th, 2007, Alex Rodriguez and the Yankees finalize a 10 year, $275 million contract, making the richest deal in baseball history. A Rod, who had suppressed the all time salary record when he was signed with the Rangers in 2000, chastised uh, his agent, Scott Boris who blamed himself for the poor handling of his opt-out clause with the team. So he wasn't even happy with that money. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look at wow. Gina. Look at Derek Gina. Off to yeah, the side there. Exactly. Yeah. Happy and that's in what, the moment. Little did he know. Oh, oh my man. God. Like he, he, he should have known a lot better. They, they're, they are not friends to say, oh. to say the least. No, well, haters going to hate, man. A Rod's one of the best to ever do it. Mr. Yes. Gift basket himself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, never mind. Well, <laughs> let, not, not let, let's one. go through some um, because he is a diamond icon uh, nominee. Let's go through um, some of the A Rod uh, uh, picture files. Uh, yes. Um, and uh, this either puts him in or gets him out, uh, depending I, I, on where you stand. I have yeah. a question. Sure. Can you get this from the Montgomery Ward mail order catalog? <laughs> uh, the end, apparently. This is where I got that from, of course. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and of yes. course, yes, this is you, you, you can actually get this. You can actually get that mattress and uh this is a tank top of uh in uh yes, yeah. Oh my god, yeah, it's too funny. It, dude, it, any talented people watching this show, photoshop my face onto that picture and I'll <laughs> I will frame it and I will put it in my house. Okay. This beautiful kisser on that beautiful photo. Make it happen. Uh, too funny. Too funny. <laughs> well, let's close out with some baseball trivia. We want to know your knowledge of baseball. Let us know in the chat uh, your answers to these uh, questions. So the uh, episode is 137. So we're going to work with that number. So let's. <laughs> I've always owned no on these. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's do it. So question number one: This Hall of Famer has exactly 137 career stolen bases. Who is he? Here are your choices: Is it Billy Southworth? Is it Tony Lazeri? Is it Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline? Is it Larry Chipper Jones? Is it the Mick, Mickey Mantle, or Connie Mack? Let us know your answers in the chat. Jack and I are just like. <laughs> 137 stolen bases. Well, I'm thinking here, I got to give a shout. I saw Danny James in the chat. Uh, he was watching Hazy History, and literally, I saw Danny James Sunday night at a New Japan Wrestling Show. Cheers to Danny. Bottom of the beer. Oh, right Thank on. you for being a fan supporter. So, cheers, Danny. Thanks for Thanks. coming on. Thanks, Danny. We appreciate your uh, coming by and checking us out. So, uh, Ian has uh, Chippa Jones. Greg Hall has uh, Tony Lazeri. That's a good one. But who do you have? I'm looking at you. Right. 
as we are like i'm working i'm working through it man i'm uh if you could see what's going on in my head right now it's like zach galifianakis from the hangover no, I, I think there's two, <laughs> I, I think there's two canaries in there just like flying oh. around the uh, i well, i'll talk you through my math when it's my turn to answer all right go for it kevin oh no i have to go first oh no uh there's only one for sure i don't think it is so to go different, let's go with uh, – gosh, I'm like – I'm down to two names. Uh, you know what? The, I'll go with my initial first thought. I think it's going to be the Mac is back. Let's go with Connie Mac. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, I, I didn't even know he hardly even played baseball, but I was like, yeah. all right. He's Who knew? Good. Yeah. Well, he's... he must have been stealing bases in his suit when he was married, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> That's what I'll go with. Connie Mac. Yeah. All right, Cowboy Jack, what do you got? So – Based on his one of his teammates' all-time greats love of stealing bases, because I know he's a competitive guy, he probably loves stealing some bases. I'm gonna go with Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline. Nice, nice. All right, so we have uh Chippa Jones, Tony Lazeri, uh Connie Mack, uh no way choosing Mickey Mantle. Uh that's the only one I didn't think it was. Yep. Yeah, I, I didn't think so, but yep, and or no Billy Southworth. And the answer is it is oh, Mr. Tiger. Yeah. Al Boom. Boom. Yeah. My math worked. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I did I I don't really equate him with uh stolen bases. Oh, and um that was that was like my second least choice of going. Well, the guy had three thousand hits. I didn't think he would have, you know, but play a long hey, time. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And stolen bases were big, big. They were the they were the home run of that time period, man. <laughs> yeah. And if you would have picked B Billy Southworth, uh, he has 138. Oh, oh wow. wow. Billy Southbound him down. I dig it. Connie Mack Good. actually has 127. Mickey Mantle, 153. Oh, wow. Chipper Jones, uh, 150. And Lazari had 148. Uh, wow. Hey, Michael. Hmm. Jack, Jack can't hear this. Okay. Throw that question back next week for 138 stories. <laughs> Jack will not remember who it is. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll uh, bet you Kevin. even here. I bet you even hearing that, I'll still say Al K line, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, Jack. Here's Jack. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So question number two. This Hall of Fame pitcher has 137 complete games. Uh, I don't know if you can even get uh, a pitcher to have one complete game this uh, in, in this day and age. Uh, so this one has 137. Who is he? Here are your uh, choices. It is is it Babe Ruth? Is it Bullet Rogan? You uh, you can actually watch his podcast. <laughs> on uh, uh don't watch it. Don't watch is it Greg it. Maddox? Is it Dennis Eckersley, Dizzy Dean, or Sandy Koufax? Who do you got out there? Let All us right. know. I'm down to like three names here. Down to three names here. Now it's just a matter of just trying to use logic. And remember when I saw these guys play. Live back in some of the early 1900s, some of the 1960s. Walt Rogan, I don't re remember when he played. Probably the 1800s. Yeah, he was more concentrating on on the broadcasting uh, <laughs> and getting swole, dude. And getting swole. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Do right. you think Bullet Rogan ate bullets as part of his show of Fear Factor? Or he threw. He, or he threw. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Took me a while. Took me a while. I did it. <laughs> it took me a second too. All right, that's a deep cut now. That's like twenty years ago that show was on. Yeah. So Ian going with uh, Greg Maddox. Greg Hall going with uh, Daffy's brother Dizzy. Nicely done. Very good. A, a fan of the Gas House Gang, are you, Greg? Yes. There you go. <laughs> nice. Now I'm now gonna, silence. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'll, I'll fire off bullet Bob Rogan. Yeah. I like that. The I like bullet. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I have three names because 
I mean, Dennis Eckersley didn't, was a reliever for part of his career. And then Babe Ruth and Sandy Kovacs put pitch for like 10 years-ish. So the number is 137. 137. You know, let's go full circle. I'm going to go Sandy Koufax. All right. Retired young. I figure he pitched 15 complete games a, a season for eight years. Bam, he's almost there. That was the red herring, dude. You fell for it, bro. And, I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, according to Ian, Koufax was uh, far hey, too wild. All and he was hitters. wild in high school. So All those he, no-nos, though. All those no-nos. Well, you would be correct. Wow. 137 wow. complete games. Uh, look at that. He has 165 wins, 137 complete games. Yeah. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Think about that. He lo he lost or no decision in 28 complete games. You That's, know what I mean? Jeez. That, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Hall. What? Greg Hall with a great callback. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> cafeteria crew for the win that is awesome so a uh, babe ruth had 107 complete games bullet rogan if you would have chosen him he 136 oh uh, yeah, one so nice. off Man. greg maddox get this greg maddox only 109 only wow only. i thought he was gonna have I thought he was going to have the most of that whole list. Yes. What a, what a rookie, dude. Dennis yeah. Eckersley, former uh, starting pitcher, yes. 100. Right. Dizzy Dean actually has the most, uh, 154 out that of this sense. list. That makes and sense. Sandy Koufax with 137. So, I don't know why I thought Max was going to have a lot. I, mean, I should have known yes. what I mean, the modern pitcher. 50K well spent. Yeah. Sure. Great exactly. Time. Yes. Exactly. Well, um, Let's end out. Um, Kevin, you sent this one to me. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely would have thought Maddox would yeah. have had this too. Because he um, had the most tenure of all those pitchers. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this You sent this to me, and I'm glad you did, because this is actually a very uh, – he's actually a very stoic player uh, who unfortunately passed away. Um, like this, this morning. I just – I mean, I found uh, – I got a message at, like, 2 o'clock Pacific, and I was like, oh, shoot, I better get the word out to you. I don't know if you'd be able to get a slide, but there you go. Man, it, it, 1929 to 2022. Kevin, give me that math. How old is good brother right here? He was 93. 93. Wow. 93. Struck down in the prime of his life. <laughs> yes, dude. exactly. So get well, this. Well, you know, hang on. I, let me tell you something. 93 was the prime of my life. Let me tell you yeah. that. Right now. No, I know. You, you, you really enjoyed the 1820s. <laughs> 1893, I mean. You were having a midlife yeah. crisis at 93. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you bought a Mustang, uh, uh, eight cylinder. I a Mustang. Mustang horse because there was no Mustang cars back then. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so Kurt Simmons, the last surviving member of the 1950 Philadelphia Phillies Whiz Kids, uh, died at 93. Uh, just today, one of the greatest pitchers in franchise history, the lefty posted a record of 115 and 110 in with 109 complete games. It's more than Greg Maddox. There you go. Yeah, and uh, not not a Hall of Famer, so he's not in that conversation. But yeah. but 18 shutouts and a 366 ERA in now, 325 games. About, now think about that. That's a that you're 115 and 110 with that ERA 366. That tells you how bad the Phillies were in the 50s. Right. In 1950, right. they were called the Whiz Kids because they made like a crazy run and made the World Series that year. Yeah, and, and then they they, got, they, they, they got lost the Yankees, Yankees, right? Yeah. Yankees like swept. So he was a member of the pennant winning Wiz Kids team. He actually missed part of that season, um, including the World Series, serving in the National Guard uh, during the Korean War. Can you imagine that happening now? You know what so, I mean, like, imagine, you know, like, hey, uh, uh, let's see, who's the, uh, I'm trying to think, let's say it's someone from the, like, the world series like, hey you you can't play in the world series you gotta go you gotta go serve and you gotta right, go to Afghanistan. right. Totally. It's like what yeah <laughs> that's not gonna happen well, right okay yeah, yeah. It's, okay gene carlos stanton uh yeah. <laughs> get, yeah. get in there uh so the, uh, he also missed the 1951 season uh, uh fulfilling his military uh, commitment so uh a veteran a war veteran Absolutely. he actually went um uh he actually okay, so I I I knew his name looked familiar. I was like, 
Kurt Simmons because there's also a cardinal named Ted Simmons. Right. So I'm like, no. Yes, but he was actually on the 64 Cardinals that, oh. that won a World Series. Oh, okay. So I, I was like, I know his name for some, and it's the Cardinals associated, but I, I wasn't aware that that uh, this was the same guy. So uh, sad to see that. Yeah. And one other thing I, I, I will look at, I'll see how bad the Phillies were. You know, this guy has to be a good pitcher because he actually started two all-star games. Oh, he wow. He was a starting pitcher for the all-star, the National League all-stars in uh, 1952 and 1957. That says something right there. Yeah. If you're actually able to start a, an all-star game for your league, that's, that's a hell of a pitcher. And that, that those are back in the days when like the all-star game was like, they, they, they wanted to win that for their league. Yes. Like it was a big deal. And uh, so to start it is actually that wow. they're putting their yeah. best pitcher out there to, to start it off. Well, I'm going to open one up in honor of Kurt Simmons from a, from a pitcher, Rob Croxel. There you go. Salute. Definitely, Definitely. Uh, way higher ERA here. 9.14, but it's all right. <laughs> one pitcher to another. Wow. Rest yeah. Power, Kurt Simmons. Cheers. Yes, absolutely. So again, in two weeks, uh, Ian, who is uh, in our chat right now, is going to be a part of this. Um, so the 2022 Diamond Icons Awards, we're going to be uh, inducting three new members along with some other uh, people that, that have made an impact on us uh, and what we've done uh, over the course of this year. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. Check us out next week. We're going to have our Christmas episode. This will be the episode after it. So um, again, go to, um, I'm going to go to this, go to beerbaseball.com. You can um, go to the first, the, the, the nominees, click onto that, and you can read all about all the nominees. And, uh, and we want everybody to um, tell us like who we should be choosing in the chat uh, because it's going to be put up to vote uh, three to two vote. Uh, just one vote. will put, put that person uh, uh, ahead and advance them. So uh, we're looking forward to this It's always a lot of fun. And, um, and we're going to uh, let me uh, add this to the stream. There we go. So, Here's where we are on all the socials. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Uh, guys, uh, I know that Angelo has a uh, rip and review uh, this week on Saturdays at 9 p.m. I'm uh, 9 p.m. 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, but guys, did we have any other things that you guys wanted to promote? Michael Mondragon, I have a request. Can you go back to that graphic of beerbaseball.com, please? Sure. Let me do because that. it is the holiday season. So where do other people like to shop at is Montgomery Ward for your <laughs> mail order. But if you need to get something in right the mail, there. look at that right there. If you shop on Amazon, you go, you click on that link, buy whatever you buy on Amazon. It's not going to cost you anything extra, but a little bit of a kickback will come back to the blog and help keep this going. Yeah. And we have other things on here too. You can actually get, um, if you oh. don't have a baseballism, uh, account you can get 15 percent. they have a lot of cool stuff yeah, right now absolutely. yeah oh um, homage homage is on oh, there like craft beer and support us wait yes what? you can uh get craft beer and, and support us here uh rakuten is another one uh, I, always use, I, I always use this for um basically if i'm gonna buy something it's a it's a little thing that you can buy in your you have in your browser it uh -huh. gives you cash back i've gotten like a ton of money back you can actually get, get these books and that they'll support us Ooh, uh, as well so we yeah we have a lot of stuff oh there's billy billy ball we we're hey, talking all about right. Uh, yeah, read that yeah, if you look at, on there the the billy ball era um a, a new diamond icon nominee uh, sticker mule, iographer. So we have all this stuff. So yeah, check us out. Uh, we, we definitely have a lot of, uh, cool stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is again, another great episode. Uh, I actually, speaking of baseballism, I got this, I think I got this last year. What, wait, what? <laughs> I did not, I don't remember you showing that before. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. Yeah. So this is, uh, from baseballism. Wow. Tag me. Yep. So nice. this is uh, the kind of the the ugly sweater, and then I, I next week I'll probably wear the uh, the Christmas gift that you got me uh, yes. from the. It's from the here. Yes, the, the, uh, the yeah. elotes from yes, uh, the elotes. Yep. Then, yeah, I'll wear, I know I have my um, 
my one from uh, I, I believe it was Everett. I think I was uh, the Everett Aqua socks I have there. Yes, I'll, sweater. I'll wear that for next week. Definitely. So we're going to have a lot of fun uh, uh, next week with the Christmas episode. Diamond icons coming up. Uh, but I, and then you on Instagram, you guys did finally, did you guys finally do your Castro? Yes. We, we broke yeah. the Castro curse last Sunday on our live Instagram. We did our, the triumphant return of hazy history with Kevin Lyon and Cowboy Jack Durango, where we discussed <laughs> Fidel Castro and the question, what's he good enough to pitch in the MLB? Mm. Good, times. good times. That's that sounds fun. Thank you, David. We appreciate uh, all of you. We appreciate Ian and Greg and and my brother Adam and all the people. Uh, Bubble pug. Pug. Um, if Danny's still out there, cheers, Danny. Thank you. Yeah, we super appreciate uh, you dropping by and uh, listening to our our nonsense, our reminiscing, uh, getting it all out of our head, and uh, we appreciate it so much. Um, and episode one thirty eight is next week. 139 diamond icons we have we still have a lot to go um it's going to be a, a lot of fun so um tell a friend we need a lot of people here get them to subscribe yes. we totally appreciate it do us a solid and uh yeah it, it is a it is a small click on your end that makes a huge difference to us on our end so please 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 get the word out see how many let's do a drive let's see how many subscribers we can get and grow this DIY well, punk wait, rock. Happened? Let's do it. Yeah, it's the Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, Lewis telethon. telethon. The Jerry yeah. Lee Lewis telethon. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to shake some nerves and rouse some brains this holiday season. <laughs> Go to YouTube, click on <laughs> 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 baseball. Baseball brew crew. Sorry. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. Great baseballs and beers Great of fire. Great baseballs of fire. Oh, there you go. That's a perfect one. All right, everyone. We'll see you next uh, Tuesday for another Baseball Brew Crew podcast. This Saturday, Angelo Rippin' Review. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye-bye. Yeah.